You want proof it works? I'm about to let you talk to the horse. This episode of Mastery Marketing, I'm talking with business owner Phil Stuck. Welcome to Mastering Marketing, your daily dose of marketing wisdom. Now, most of my Mastery Marketing videos are tips, tricks, and topics focused on small businesses or small business marketing and how to get the best ROI for your marketing dollars. But today, I wanted to take you straight to the horse's mouth and let you hear the results that he's getting and how he's doing it. Phil Stuck is the owner of the Mr. Sticky's location in Mechanicsburg, PA and Hershey, PA. Phil and I served together at the 193rd Special Operations Wing in Middletown, PA. So let's go talk with him live about his advertising. <laughs> hey, Phil. How you hey, doing, man? Hey, good. Thank good, you, good, to you going? good to see you. Great seeing you, too. Thank you so much for taking time to do this with us. Uh, the whole goal of Mastery Marketing is small business owners helping other small business owners. Okay. So today, I'd like to talk to you about... When you started your business, you're about what a year and a half almost. Up uh, just a little over a year, a year so a few months. Let's roll back the clock and go back to, you know, six months before you were going to open. You knew you were going to do it. You've committed to it. Everything you've got approval for what you're planning on doing it, and it comes down to the logistics. What's going through your mind as far as uh, what to do for your marketing? Well, I mean, honestly, before I even when I started thinking about marketing, I was just in a my mind was in a whirlwind uh, because everybody had everybody's idea of what they thought was the best idea. Um, it was explained to me a little bit more in depth as far as how the funnel system works. And you know, I found that that, that system, that, that type of thinking does work. Um, you know, and I, was, I came from a business before where I didn't have to do a whole lot of marketing because it was word of mouth. Yeah. Um, but I know that you know, that takes years to establish. That just doesn't happen overnight. doesn't happen in the first few years. But so I, I started out doing a little bit of um, uh, radio for a little bit. And I just wanted to test the waters to see really what was effective, uh, where my money was best used. So I, I also wanted to do print a little bit as far as... Um, the newspaper? Well, no, as far as like um, Clipper. Oh, okay. So, okay. So I print so, magazines. Yeah. Yep. So I, I tried that, and that worked out well. And then I was approached to, you know, try something a little bit different. Um, that didn't work out so well, um, unfortunately. And then you had confronted me about talking to me about sweet deals, mm -hmm. and I thought, you know what, a, a great opportunity because here there's no out of pocket expense. It's only product that I'm giving up. Yeah. And I thought, hey, let's give this a try. Um, what can it hurt? And I will say that when you guys launched that for me on that uh, Thursday night, that Friday morning, I came in the next day, did a live interview with you guys. And I was great. I was shocked, actually, when I came in here to uh, the Hershey Market, where I'm at right now. Mm -hmm. um, and we opened at 9 o'clock. And within, I would say, the first two hours, I had three people walk up to me and say, was that you on the radio this morning? Mm -hmm. I've never had that type of quick response from anybody. Mm -hmm. The next day, I had four people show up and say, was that you on the radio yesterday? And out of all those seven folks, six bought from me. So nice. I haven't had that return, that, that impact that quick before in any type of advertising. Yeah. So, and I can honestly say, you know, ever since I've done that, every day I've shown an increase in sales Monday through Saturday compared to the last probably six weeks. Yep. Looking back. If you if you take the Sweet Deals program, for those of you that don't know what it is, it's a cashless advertising program that allows you to trade gift certificates for your product or service in exchange for valuable radio digital advertising. So uh, what Phil does, he, he trades with Wink 104. He gets radio commercials. He gets a two-minute interview. Uh, they do a video, like a, a video commercial, kind of like we're doing now. Um, there's four 60-second commercials that all air during a two-hour business spotlight about the business. And um, you know, commercials run in during prime time, Monday through Friday, 6, 8, 7 p, which is the most heavily listened to time of the day, as well as on the weekends, too. So from a dollar standpoint, there's a rule called the 95-5 rule, right? At any given time... Anybody that's in market for your product, which is anybody that likes sticky buns, right? Only 5% of those people are ever in the market for your product, right? Right. So marketing really has two distinct important roles, right? Converting existing demand or, or identifying that 5% that's looking to buy now 
And the bigger part of your budget is creating that future demand, right? Building that brand trust, that credibility, the name recognition. You know, we don't hear something once uh, on a commercial or see a TV commercial one time and jump and, and pick up the phone to buy it, you know, unless it's something crazy, some crazy special. Um, but that's not how we buy. We buy right. for two reasons. People need it or want it. In this case, this is a want, right? You right. got to get somebody when they, they want that need. Yep. Um, and I do have to caution you. These are extremely addictive. I think I was contractually obligated to say that during the. And they are extremely. <laughs> they are. They're really good. And he has a, <laughs> he has a, a great um, tip for heating them up in your microwave. At the end of that, share that. Okay. Because that's, a, that's you're, you're going to thank me. So anyway, yes, sorry. All customers thank me for too. I know. See, I'm thinking about sticky buns now. I'm just totally <laughs> off track. Uh, so there's only ever 5% of people at any given time that are in market for your product, right? So budget-wise, the money that you spend today, only 18% of that is really affecting sales this month, right? 24% of that budget is affecting your sales two to five months from now. And 58% of the money that you spend today or that you're exchanging today or that you're giving out today is affecting sales six months down the road and more. So advertising really is a long-term game. The worst thing that you can do is throw a little bit of money at any medium and expect people to be standing in line. The next, I'm going to go open up the doors. I gotta, I'm going to go in an hour early because there's yeah, be so many people waiting to get yeah, in my work that way. And you, you're just sadly disappointed when you get there and nobody comes in. Maybe nobody comes in the next day and you're like, what the hell? I just, you know, I wasted my money. And nobody's coming in. It's the tortoise and the, and the hare yep. all the way, you know, and it's definitely a long term game. The building familiarity makes you known before you're needed. And that's really what it's all about. No, I agree. So out of the experience um, that you've had with marketing across everything that you've done, what, have, what, do you, what do you feel is giving you the best return on investment? Radio by far. Yeah. And even in my, uh, my other career um, in construction and flooring and stuff, radio was still the most effective tool for me. A lot of times people say to me uh, that just don't understand marketing. They're like, what radio? Nobody listens to radio because in their mind, well, you know, they, they that's... listen to their iPhone all the time. That's all they listen to. And I, that... I thought that too, too. I mean, even satellite radio and that's, that's not the case. There's still a lot of people that like love hearing those live DJs. And here's the benefit of it. You may not listen to AM FM radio, but every single station I'm advocating for all radio just because every single station has core listeners that love that station. Yeah. And that's what companies like Nielsen, and, you know, they, they track all that. How many people yeah. are listening during what day parts, how, what the age range is, what the, the, whether they're males or females, you know, they can break all that down. And that's really where, where you find out what the, the cum is or how many people collectively are listening to any given station. Um, that's what I think people don't understand, you know, and when they think about, well, I don't listen to radio. You know what? I don't listen to the radio 24 hours a day and, and I'm in radio sales and marketing. So I'm always listening to other stations just as right. competitive monitoring thing. Right. So, but I still listen to my own music. I still have my favorite playlist on Spotify. You know, I still pick out music when I'm at the Harrisburg comedy zone. You know, I was, I'm not playing off the radio there, Right. but that doesn't diminish at all. Um, the fact that I love listening to the radio, you know, right. People have favorite stations. They have favorite personalities. And that local connection is something that you can't get um, on a billboard. You know, billboards are great. Um, and I'll probably take some hate comments for this. But billboards are great for, for people that are vain, that like seeing their face up on a billboard, which I will, won't even specify a certain category of business. But I'm sure you can <laughs> figure out billboards that have people's faces on them. Um, they're great for branding. Oh, every, sure. every media option has merit. And, yep. Right? But again, somebody sees that, they don't, oh, hey, I'm going to be late to work. I just saw a billboard and I'm going to go check this guy out. Yeah, you I got to turn around. Well, I could turn around and go actually get the number off of it. <laughs> yeah, I know. Like, yeah. <laughs> get down to the next exit. <laughs> but um, yeah, so radio is great for reaching people and mass numbers, right? There are, there are four keys that will make any campaign successful, no matter what your medium is. Reach. Frequency, consistency, and the message. Reach, meaning you need to reach a lot of people. And radio, again, you're reaching 
people in thousands, tens of thousands, hundreds of thousands, right? Um, Wink 104, for example, is reaching 100 and, I think, 124,000 adults and women, 2554, every single week. 1057 the X, 147 or some crazy number every single week. And, and the these are thing. people that are actually listening, you know? And not only that, but it's also knowing your audience, um, the demographics. Oh, yeah, for I sure. Mean, which is huge. And yeah. you know what? One thing I found was once I went into Wink, it seemed like that was my target demographic. <laughs> and I think that's where I hit uh, pay dirt with yeah. my customers was the fact that, you know, I actually locked onto a station where I actually hit my, my target audience. Mm -hmm. uh, my other one, before my other stations that I tried, um, don't, don't get me wrong. Yes, it helped. Yep. But if I don't you were think, selling ribs. <laughs> oh, yeah. Well, no, I, I agree. It all depends on, again, you know, again, know your audience, know your, um, who you're reaching out to. Yep. For sure. Um, your money wisely. Any last thoughts or? Nothing other than, you know, if, if you're considering thinking about advertising, first of all, I, that's been the, my most productive route so far is Sweet Deals has been, has been great. Um, yeah. I have nothing but great Boomerang to Bar say. and Grill uses them all year to cover their advertising for all the comedy shows, all the events going on. Uh, Mercado Mio, Luna Italian Cuisine, all using Sweet Deals because it's a cost effective way for small businesses to trade. And instead of, you know, you can write the check for X dollars. Or you can trade, which you're trading at a retail value, so it's right. not really a wholesale or a retail cost. So you're saving money there. It's like you're buying advertising at a wholesale cost, really. Yep. Um, and as long as uh, the certificates, based on you know the popularity of your business, are selling on the site, then it's it's a win for everybody around, right? Absolutely. So, yeah, it's it's a great way if you don't have a budget to do a regular radio schedule and add different layers. You could definitely do sweet deals. No, I agree. And so far, you know, I, I thank you for making that reach, that call out to me, and uh, bringing me in and having me sit down in that meeting at my time because I'm just I'm glad I did it. It feels great when you do the live interview too. I, there's something about when you go in the studio, like you're like well, because you know that's where it's coming from. And, and I think it's, it goes a little bit beyond that too. I think when the customer can put a voice or a face to the business, absolutely. Yep. It, they start feeling that personal connection Yep. because they walk in, they know who I am. Yep. And, you know, I like having that personal interaction with my customers. Mm -hmm. um, and it's so important to also you know, be personable with people, have fun, joke around, be nice. Because anybody that treats me nice and I walk in to somebody's store, I, I look forward to going back, especially if they engage me in a fun way or just they're nice, just yep. genuinely nice. It makes me want to go back. I, but I, if they're not going to treat me nice, I, I'm not likely to probably go back to that same place. I just, I did a video not too long ago called, um, I don't know what it was called, but it was the top five tips for businesses from a customer service standpoint. And the first one was from the, from the second they walk in the door, make eye ta contact with a smile and yeah. greet them. Simple. But the <laughs> biggest... hanging stuff up in a rack and look back and uh, I still got, oh, she can wait or he can wait and, you know, keep doing it. Customers. But the, but the biggest takeaway the best secret I have for you when it comes to sticky buns. <laughs> oh, yeah. Here's, yeah. here's the secret. And my customers come back to me and say, the advice you gave us is money. And that is, take that sticky bun out of the uh, uh, clamshell, put it on top of uh, a plate, paper plate, whatever, put a wet paper towel over top of that, mm -hmm. put it in a microwave for roughly 30, 40 seconds, or the warmer, the better. The moisture keeps, uh, and the paper towel keeps uh, the moisture locked in the sticky bun. It doesn't, doesn't dry it out, out. Yeah. and it gets it soft just like the day it was. It came out of the oven. Mm -hmm. I had a customer walk in. She goes, I honestly forgot about my sticky bun. It was eight days. This just happened uh, last Saturday. She came into the store. She goes, I, I did that wet paper towel trick, and she goes, it resurrected. It just did like the day that I, I brought it home. So she goes, thank you for that advice. So again... Wet it does. Towel. It makes it. You, you got to try, try it. And it works. It. it works for a lot of things in the microwave. But Location in Mechanicsburg, PA. What's the plaza that you're in there? It's, well, it's at 4830 Carlisle Pike. Um, okay. It's the uh, the Hampton Center, the Carnes Plaza. And then in Hershey downstairs here in the Hershey. At, at the Hershey Fresh Market. Hershey Fresh Market. Yeah. Well, I strongly encourage you to come down and check them out and try the sticky buns. But again, like I said, warning, they're extremely addictive. So. That they are. Phil, 
Thank you, man. Yeah, thanks, buddy. Appreciate thanks, you. Keith. Thank you for your service, too, Take buddy. Take care, man. You too. Yep. Thank you. Bye bye. Back to you, Keith. That's it for this episode of Mastery Marketing. Hit the subscribe button, like, comment, and share if you found this helpful. I'll see you next time.